Hey, my YouTube friends, welcome back. Neil is back to $11.6 per share. A couple of good news for those who are looking at Neil. The first one, inflation in the United States is finally slowing down. And the second one, Neil just posted its strong Q3 earnings. And the third one, there is some good news, uh, raising hope in China's lifting dynamic zero COVID policy. So the first one, October CPI and US inflation. So finally, there's some signs showing that the inflation in the US is easing. So according to this news, October CPI uh, inflation moderates rising at an annual 7.7% over last year. So US inflation eased slightly last month as the Federal Reserve raised the interest rates for multiple times this year. And uh, the CPI in October reflected a 7.7 .7 increase over last year and 0.4% increase over the prior month. And uh, the expectation was uh, an annual 7.9 raise year over year and a 0.5 months over months uh, increase. And on a core basis, which strips out the food and energy components of the report, uh, price rose a 7.9. 6.3% year over year and 0.3 over October. And the expectations was a 6.5% annual increase and a 0.5 monthly increase. So the better than expected CPI data in October uh, really raised the hope from investors that the inflation in the United States is finally slowing down. And it makes investors to think that the Federal Reserve may finally slow down the interest rate hiking. Even though the Federal Reserve is still going to be increasing the interest rates in the following months, but the pace will slowing down from 75 basis to widely believed uh, 50, 50 points uh, in December and maybe even even slower in, in January and February 2023. And with this optimism, the Nasdaq index went up more than 7% yesterday. And today, as I'm recording this video, the Nasdaq index and the SP500 are still in the rise. Of course, Neo is benefited from this optimism between investors. And yesterday, new, uh, new stock went up more than 10% and today another 12%. So this is the first really good news for new and for the broader stock market. The inflation is slowing down. The CP CPI data is better than expected. And the second one comes from new itself. It just posted its Q3 earnings. And even though in the Q3 earnings, new incurs wider year over year loss, but the revenue is strong. And also the expectations uh, of the sales in Q4 from NIO is also very strong. So according to this news here from Yahoo Finance, um, NIO incurs wider year over year loss, as we just mentioned, but it expects robust sales in Q3. So NIO's Q3 uh, loss per share was 36 cents. That's wider than the year ago loss of 28 cents per share amid higher operating costs, uh, despite improved deliveries. And However, the revenue of NEO in Q3 posted 1 billion 827.8 million. That's up 32.6% year over year on the back of robust deliveries. In this news, it mentioned NEO delivered in total this quarter 31,607 vehicles. That's up about 30% year over year and including 22,859 SUVs and 8,748 sedans, the ET7 and ET5 sedans. The revenues generated from vehicle sales amount to 1 billion point, uh, almost, almost 1.7 billion, rising 38.2 year over year. The increase in vehicle sales was mainly led by higher deliveries. So other sales amounted to 150 million, down 8.5%. And the decline was due to lower revenues derived from automotive regulatory credits. So moving forward for the fourth quarter, new expects deliveries in the band of uh, 43,000 to 48,000 vehicles, signaling a year-over-year -year uptick of 71.8 to 91.7%, and revenues are envisioned between 2.4 billion and 2.7 billion, indicating a year-over-year -year increase of 75.4 to 95, 94%. So pretty strong earnings report from Neo and a pretty fantastic outlook and expectations in Q4 2022. And I think that outlook increases the confidence of the investors. However, the outlook or the expectations cannot be achieved uh, without a clear map of the economic, economic conditions in China. And the third news is really, really great news uh, in the broader China's environment. So that's the China's dynamic COVID policy change. 
So finally, there's some some good news on this policy change. I know there were rumors about like China's government is thinking about uh, lifting or even exiting the dynamic dynamic zero policies uh, from previous news and one week or two weeks ago. But now there, here are finally some like detailed policy change uh, coming to a horizon and be announced. So in this news that it says China eases slightly its zero COVID restrictions. According to this news, uh, one day after President Xi uh, chaired a meeting of China's C uh, CCP leaders on the country's anti-coronavirus policies. And despite the rising cases, the government announced a new 20-point plan on Friday that eased slightly its strict zero COVID measures. And the announcements came after months of speculation among uh, Chinese residents and international travelers about how far Beijing might go to relax its restrictions, which have uh, virtually closed the country's border for years. From another NPR news, we can know some of the details about the 20 points plan. So the the 20 point plan includes some major changes for inbound travelers. So the first one, hotel quarantine will be cut to five days from seven. And after this five days hotel centralized quarantine, travelers are still required to stay home for another three days. And the second one is only requiring one active PCR test within the 48 hours of boarding a flight to China instead of two uh, PCR tests. And third one is raising the threshold for counting a PCR test as positive. I think this one is not is is not relaxing, it's a tightening, but that's because some of the travelers they're, they're they are testing positive before onboarding the airplane because China and the rest of the world have different like uh, PCR standards, threshold standards. And some of the passengers actually, they are negative of COVID. However, they're counted, they're counted as positive when they're like arrived in China. So now the threshold is raising uh, to make that the same as in domestic China. So for the key domestic changes, the first one is for close contacts, centralized quarantine is cut to five days from seven and with three days of home isolation still required. That's the same as the inbound travelers. And the second one is secondary contacts, that is close contacts of people labeled close contacts of positive cases will no longer have to undergo quarantine or medical surveillance. So there will be no label to the secondary contacts, no, no secondary contacts anymore. The third one is residents traveling from high risk areas to other parts of the country will no longer have to spend seven days in quarantine and instead can spend the same period in home isolation. And the fourth one is government will crack down the arbitrary lockdowns and uh, punish those respons responsible. And this, this one is important to those cities, those like governors or the government officials who are like um, blandly locking down the cities or a larger area, even though there's just like single cases or just the one or two cases. And uh, the massive lockdown to a city or an area is really, really hurting people's normal life and uh, not to mention the economy. So this, this policy, this point is trying to resolve that. So overall, that's a relaxation from the current policy. And I think what China's government is doing is it's like changing its policy by turning a, a wide turn, but not a, a U-turn. So basically it's saying now it's adding new policies to existing policies for the first phase, then to add more policies and remove those conflicting with the new policies, then then just to, to remove the rest of policies. Then after the three steps, uh, the, the uh, citizens in China will re realize, oh, the policies have like completely changed, but this will take, take months. So one other thing worth mentioning in the 20 point plan is that China cancels its circuit breaker measures for inbound flights. We know China has the circuit breaker measure for inbound flight or international flight flying to China. So if a flight, if the passengers in one flight reach the third threshold, the whole uh, flight will be canceled for like four weeks, two weeks, or even longer. Now this policy is no longer there. Um, the circuit break is gone. And that's a good sign for China to reconnect to the world. Uh, at the same time, China is increasing the international flights. So yeah, overall, the three news for uh, for Neo stock and for other Chinese stocks are like really uh, great. I'm hoping the situations are turning better, turning brighter, not just the, for Neo investors, the uh, Chinese people are suffering enough. All right, that's all the news I wanna to share today. Thanks for listening. If you find this information helpful, please like this video and consider to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.